Hey, 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 scrappy people. It's Tracy Reed here today coming at you with a life crafted size layout in my album. And today I'm going to be using the My Person collection. Today we're starting in Photoshop because I'm going to be specifically showing you how to use the My Person stamps to create your own background. So we're going to be creating a background just like we would with real stamps in like on paper, but with Photoshop. So let's get into it. So uh, my canvas is going to be 10 inches wide by 8.25 inches tall. That is the size of a life crafted album spread. We want to make sure that we do 300 pixels per inch to get a full high resolution print. So I'm going to create and then I'm going to add a white background actually just slightly off white. So I already have the my person colors in my swatches palette because obviously I designed the collection so it's there. So I, I'm going to use the off white from the kit. I'm going to show you though how to pick colors here in just a second from the product. So I'm going to do this off white and I'm also going to drive or draw a um, guideline from my ruler. If you don't have your rulers on, you hit control R to turn them on. You can drag a guideline from the ruler into, I'm going to drag it directly into the middle of my layout. And for some reason, my snapping isn't turned on. So I'm going to go view snap so that it snaps to the middle of the page. There we go. Okay. So I only really want the, my person, um, stamp, background. I don't know why I said it like that. I really only want the stamp stamp stamped background on one side. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to open up this, the stamps. Excuse me. Goodness gracious. I'm going to open up the stamps and I am actually going to be scrapbooking my fur baby. So the very first stamp here says my best friend has paws. So I'm going to drag in, drop it directly into the layout. And I'm going to be making my own background from this stamp. I might add another stamp in. We'll find out together. Depends on how well this makes a page or makes a background. So obviously I can just choose from my colors that I already have picked up here, but I'm going to show you how to choose colors and how to add them to your swatches palette. So if I want this layout to match the colors of the my person collection, then I need to figure out what those colors are. So I'm going to open up, let's do something easy. I'm going to open up a sticker, just one that has a lot of the colors from the collection. So this one, this one has a lot. So I'm going to open up the sticker and I'm going to go to my paint bucket tool and I don't have a, okay. If you hit alt when you're on your paint bucket tool, it turns into the color sampler. So you can hit alt and click on whatever color it is that you want. And it will automatically add to your swatches up here. So if I click on that one, this one, you can see it adding up there in the top right hand corner to the like most recent swatches. Um, if you want to add it to your actual swatches so that they don't disappear, you double click on the color over here and then add to swatches in the color palette. And we'll add it to this swatch panel right here. Just hit okay. And you can see it added it right there. So that is how you choose colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this stamp over and over in different colors to make a background. This is too big for me right here. So I'm going to make it smaller. If you, uh, hold down alt and shift, it will get smaller and constrained proportion. So it doesn't get distorted. And then to change the color, you can do a couple of different things. The easiest thing for me right now, I'm going to rasterize this layer and then I'm going to turn on this lock transparency because what that will do is it'll make it so that I can use my paint bucket tool and it won't distort the stamp and add extra pixels to the outside of the stamp, but I will definitely be able to flood fill it. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to click and drag and hold down alt and command while I do it. And that will duplicate the layer while I drag. Then I'm going to repeat the process with another color. 
and another and I think maybe this pink maybe let's let's do the greens too just in case I'm not sure what color scheme I want to go with yet so let's just do all the colors okay so now I've got all the colors and now I need to make a pattern with it and obviously the most the easiest pattern would be to just do this and line them up and repeat it but then you have this extra space in here oops I'm gonna lock this so it doesn't move then you have this extra space in between all of the stamps which even if you put stamps on top of it like you this is a fine pattern and it works well but I'm gonna get a little bit more creative than that so I'm going to start here and then I'm going to actually layer them let's see how we can do this the best you can see because I have my snapping on it kind of snaps to where the other stamps are so like it moves like to line up with the stamp on top of it okay so this kind of mimics the the rainbow paper the mul the tonal rainbow paper that's in the collection so you get kind of that arc across the page and so I kind of like that so I'm going to keep doing this and see what I can build. Okay, so now that I have my pattern made, I can go ahead and start printing it. I want to make sure there's a little gap down here. So I'm going to make sure that this gets a little lower. So I can go ahead and print it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit command shift E to merge everything. And then I just want to print this one side. So I'm going to select it with my marquee tool and I'm going to create a new layer from it. Then I'm just going to delete this old layer and I'm going to change my canvas size to 11 by 8.5, which is my printer size, my printer paper. And I am ready to print. Okie dokie, so I've got this all printed out. I did print two copies just in case. So you can see it printed out really well. I love this cool sort of arcing shell design. Um, it is very busy though, so I'm gonna be covering up a lot of it just so that you can see it um, like behind my design. So my best friend has paws. These pictures are actually from oh, the beginning of the Panini lockdown, uh, March, 2020. Uh, I found them, I was looking for a different photo, but I found them and I never scrapbooked them because there were other photos taken at the same time that I did end up scrapbooking, but oh my gosh, I love these photos so much. It's funny how you can come back to photos, um, you know, a couple years later and all of a sudden they have new meaning for you. So this is what I'm going to be working with. You can see I've got a bunch of the my person stuff ready to go over here to pull from including digital embellishments from the kit that i had printed out and i'm also going to be incorporating some color cast designs veneer in as well so let's go all right so let's get right into it i decide immediately that i only want one of those papers and for some unknown reason i decided i really wanted to pair it with this traveler's notebook signature with words on it but it actually comes together really well it works um, so I'm not mad at it, but it's pretty, it was pretty funny to me that I'm like more words. That is definitely what this background needs. So I am going to create a very like collaged layered look for this page. So I'm pulling out some of the, um, pattern cards to stick as like behind my photos as bases. So I'm kind of building a symmetrical spread with this sort of collage vibe on both sides they're not going to be you know exactly symmetrical but they're going to have like the same feels on both sides i trimmed down that journaling card to a two and a half by two and a half square um, because i wanted the sentiment but it was a little bit too large for the composition I find that happens a lot with um, life crafted size pages is that journaling cards need to be trimmed down a bit, which is fine. Um, I designed mine specifically to have a lot of room around the edges so that I can trim them down, so that works. Uh, I wanted to obviously incorporate this wood veneer, so I'm going to go with the hearts, but I really wanted this giant love story too as the main title of the page. So I'm going to have two of the hearts, 
that say adore you, hugs and kisses, and then that giant love story too. <laughs> you can see my little excited finger wag there. I was very happy with the way it was looking already. I cut out this scallop from the My Person Digital Kit. You can definitely cut out um, print and cut digital kit embellishments too. This frame is from the digital kit. That bingo card, the, the, um, the card right there, they're all from the digital kit. So I printed out some of the things that I thought would work in paper scrapbooking with the digital kit as well. So I'm incorporating a lot of that. I liked this craft tag with the vibe of this page. So I'm gonna incorporate that and the white one, even though the kittens definitely got to that white tag, you can see it chewed up on the corner. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to make sure I cover that part up. Although it's vaguely appropriate for this layout because it is of Abby, but Abby doesn't chew on things. So we're not going to pin the chewed up corner on Abby. <laughs> She is, uh, I've had Abby since 2009. She is going to be 14 this year. So I'm, I'm definitely, she and I are definitely both feeling her age. Hello, God kitten. Um, so I'm doing a lot of pages about her lately and really celebrating her while she's still here. So I want to make sure, because like when Reese passed, it was really hard to look at photos of him. So I want to really make sure that I celebrate her now while she's still here before it's too hard to look at photos of her. So that I, I'm definitely going back through my photos and finding ones that um, have never been scrapbooked. And I love, I, I love these photos so much. I cannot believe I never scrapbooked them. I must have at some point, but definitely not like this. Anyway, side, side note, I've got the wood veneer down. I decided I wanted this tag because it matched the tags. Um, in the background so I, I thought it would look good. I have this like weird corner down here in the bottom that like looks awkward <laughs> so I need to fix that but first I'm going to work on the other side and now I do put down this bingo card and this tag um, and then I'm going to pull it all up because you'll see when I put down the love story wood veneer the way that it situates over the tag and the bingo card it just it's too hard, it's like awkward to read. There's too many words going on in one place. And even though like the bingo is like decorative, it's still like, you can see that it says bingo. So it adds to the words in this page, on this page. Um, so when I put the love story wood veneer over it, between that and the interaction with the ring on the tag, it's just too much. And I leave it there for a while, but I'm just telling you in advance, so yes, it's going to look like too much, at least to my eye, and I'm going to fix it. So don't, don't yell at me. <laughs> so I've got this down. I'm gonna put down this um, journal spot. I'm just gonna add a few lines of journaling once this page is done. All right, see, you could see me like fussing with it and, and being a little bit awkward with it when I was putting it down because of that tag hole. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to fix it. All right. So I, I, I could have left it. Maybe. No, <laughs> I don't like it even now. So, okay. I'm going to start incorporating in embellishments from the collection. So I have sorted out my embellishments by type already. Um, I find that this makes it easier for me to scrapbook if I have all of like the decorative things organized so that like I can be like, okay, I'm going to pull all the leaves in that I want at once. And then I'm going to pull all the hearts in that I want at once. And then I'm going to pull all the arrows in that I want at once. I find that it works for my creative brain to have everything in front of me so that I can see it before I, um, before I really dig in. You can see me trying to cover up that B with the heart because it was really bothering me. I really like this tag that says we were together. I forget the rest. I was going to incorporate besties, but we're getting to the point where there's like too many words going on. So it's always a, a hazard of me, of my scrapbooking is too many words. So we're going to do the rainbows instead. I want to make sure I include the date because this was this was just after the beginning of the great panini lockdown so uh, that's probably why I never scrapbook these pages but um, I wanted to make sure that I include that date in there because I realize that I don't date my pages a lot because I often scrapbook in chronological order so all of the, the, the pages go together in the album but I really need to break that habit <laughs> 
So I'm filling in some of this awkward space here. I filled in some of the awkward space on the other side with that rainbow. Ugh, I'm not loving the top of this page. I'm trying to make it work, it's just not working. There we go. Uh, so I'm gonna start pulling this up here in a second because it's just bothering me. But first we need to stick everything down so it doesn't move around too much. Look at me being all smart and not sticking things down until I'm ready instead of sticking them down as I go, except for this part. All right, so you, th this wood veneer is so fragile because it's nice and thin in your albums. So I had to be super careful taking that off because it was stuck down with red line tape, which is super sticky. So I adjusted that so that it's the love story is below that tag hole, which helps. And now I'm gonna take this bingo off. The way that I print my papers at Office Depot, they kind of have a shine to them. They're not shiny, but they have like a coating to them that makes it easy to pull um, adhesive off so I can get away with it. But like you can see the background I printed at home and that's on regular Epson premium presentation paper. So it doesn't have that sheen to it. So I have to be super careful with what I pull off of that background because um, it was definitely ripping up the background. You can see it just a little bit, but I'm gonna cover it back up so it's not a big deal. Okay, whew, that's better. I can read that love story better. It's making me much happier. I need to put this down and cover up the corner of that tag that, <laughs> that the cat's chewed on. I need to pull this up and stick it underneath. You can see it ripped, but that's okay. I'm gonna put it right back. I'm gonna stick it underneath the heart though, make sure that it gets covered up. Okay. I need to cover up the corner of that tag. So I'm going to do that with this word bit that I love. We were together, I forget the rest. So now this page is coming together. We are almost done. I'm gonna incorporate a few more little bits and pieces, but I couldn't make anything work without adding too much to it. So I put those away, stamped my date, put it underneath up here. And then just a little here and there, little bits and pieces. I still don't love this bottom corner. And also that tag ends abruptly. So I need to cover that portion up too, because that looks weird. So I'm gonna use a couple hearts for that. Cute. Wouldn't even know I was covering something up. Look at all those hearts. So fun. Okay, uh, I need something down here to mitigate some of that extra space. So I'm going to have a couple of twin heart bits and then I'm going to call it good. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you. If you don't already, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'm at Tracy M. Reed. I'd love to see you over there as well. There is a link to the My Person collection in the description box below, and I will see you next time. Thank you.